Hey there, viewers. The flowers are blooming and the dreary winter weather is finally coming to a close. But instead of enjoying the beautiful weather, you're stuck inside. Every time you leave the house, your eyes start watering, your nose starts itching, and you can't stop sneezing. You're suffering from hay fever, which is also known as allergic rhinitis. What causes hay fever and what can you do to get rid of it today? Keep watching to find out. Real quick, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Hay fever shares many of the signs and symptoms of a cold. However, unlike colds, hay fever isn't caused by a virus. It's actually an allergic reaction to small particles in the air known as allergens. When your body comes into contact with an allergen, your immune system thinks the allergen is an invader, so it tries to protect your body by releasing chemicals into your bloodstream. One of the main chemicals is called histamine, which is what causes the symptoms associated with hay fever. Common symptoms of hay fever include runny nose, watery, itchy red eyes, wheezing, cough, sneezing, fatigue, headaches, and post-nasal drip, which is mucus running down the throat. So what can you do today to get rid of these symptoms and improve your quality of life? One, avoidance. The first step to treatment is modifying your environment to limit your exposure to the allergens. This means doing everything possible to make sure that you don't come into contact with the things that trigger your allergies. During peak pollen season, keep your windows closed and use air conditioning in your house and car. Avoid using window fans because they can draw pollen into the house. Try to stay indoors when pollen counts are at a high during certain parts of the day. Pollen counts tend to peak in the mid-morning and early evening, and on days when it's very windy. When you're outside, wear sunglasses to keep the pollen out of your eyes. Reduce your exposure to dust mites by using bedding covers that are mite-proof. This includes covers for your pillows, comforters, and mattress. It is also important to wash your bedding frequently in hot water to remove any mite exposure. Keep the humidity in your home low by using a dehumidifier, especially in the basement and other damp parts of your home. Lastly, if you know you're allergic to pet dander, wash your hands after petting any animal and throw your clothes in the wash if you've been in a room with animals for any extended period of time. Two, medication. If your allergies are not well controlled by implementing avoidance techniques, your doctor may prescribe you medications to help to reduce your symptoms. Intranasal corticosteroids. Intranasal steroids are the most effective medication for treating hay fever and are designed to reduce nasal congestion, runny nose, and sneezing. Make sure to avoid spraying the medication directly against the inner portion of your nose because it can cause irritation and bleeding of the nasal septum. Intranasal corticosteroids may not be appropriate for everyone, so make sure to ask your doctor if it's appropriate for you. Antihistamines. Antihistamines counter the effect of histamine which is the chemical in your body that's responsible for many of the irritating symptoms. Some antihistamines are over-the-counter and others require a prescription from your doctor. In general, the newer second-generation antihistamines have few side effects, but some people may develop drowsiness or sedation, which can lead to impairment when driving or functioning at work. Another common side effect is excessive dryness of the eyes, nose, or throat. Over time, you may find that the antihistamine becomes less effective as the allergy season progresses. If this occurs, make sure to communicate with your doctor who may change the strength or prescription. Decongestants. Decongestants can be helpful in combination with antihistamines and other medications. They help to decongest or get rid of the swelling and pressure built up in your nose, but they are not antihistamines, so they do not get rid of the other irritating symptoms. Oral decongestants can be bought either over the counter or as a prescription medication prescribed by your doctor. One common side effect of decongestants is insomnia, so you may want to take them in the morning to avoid this issue. Certain populations, such as pregnant women or people with high blood pressure, may develop complications from decongestants, so always check with your doctor before starting this medication to make sure that it's right for you. Decongestants also come in the form of non-prescription nasal sprays, which can be very effective. They're great because they often start working immediately and can last for several hours. However, prolonged use can cause rebound swelling and can actually lead to more congestion over time 
which is why you shouldn't use them for more than a few days at a time unless instructed by your doctor. Another great option is saline nasal spray because you can get it without a prescription, it's very safe, and you can use it as often as needed. Nasal saline spray helps to moisten the nasal passages and thins out thick mucus in the nose. Immunotherapy. If you have tried all of the treatments above and you're still unable to get control over your allergies, another option for treatment is immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is desensitization and is usually only considered for people who have severe allergies. There are two types of immunotherapy available, allergy shots and sublingual tablets, which is medication that you place under your tongue. Allergy shots consist of frequent injections that contain the diluted allergen. Over time, the dose has gradually increased until your immune system is less sensitive to the allergen. Ultimately, the goal is for your body to build up a tolerance so that when you're exposed to the allergen in the real world, your symptoms are significantly reduced. Sublingual tablets only work for a few allergens, but they avoid the need for injections. Sublingual tablets work by taking the medication every day starting several months before allergy season begins. Once you reach a dose that effectively works to control your symptoms, you will likely have to continue treatment for up to three years. There's a risk of severe allergic reaction with immunotherapy, so it's important that if you start this treatment, it's under the close supervision of an allergist. Hay fever can make you feel absolutely miserable, but you have many options to get control of your symptoms and improve your quality of life. Do you suffer from hay fever? What treatments have worked for you? Share your experience in the comments below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. To learn more interesting facts about the human body, subscribe to the channel. Here are two more videos that you should check out to learn more about your health.